once more mass produced for militaries. Now, when you join an army or a militia, you're also going to be given a cartridge box. Now, inside of here, you're going to contain or hold up to 25 pre made cartridges. Now, the cartridge is a paper tube, about so big, it's got the ball at the bottom, and then the pre measured gunpowder sits on top. Okay? So, when the soldier is ready to load, he's going to pull that cartridge out of here to begin the loading process. Now, we're going to go through that for you real quick. Uh, and then we'll do the manual. Well, actually, no. Before we do that, we'll do the manual of arms real quick before we go any further. Then we'll show the loading. Uh, when soldiers would join the militia or army, uh, a lot of these men had no military experience, so they would have to be taught on the manual of arms, or what's known as the school of the soldier. Uh, so men, the way they fought in those days was line warfare. Uh, men would line up next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. Typically a company was 50 to 100 men. Uh, here in Texas, the average company was about 56. Okay, so you had about 25 men in the first rank, 25 men in the second rank. So they're gonna be lined up. Now they're gonna drill during the time of camp. Uh, you'd always begin, at, this position was called order arms. Now your officer, he's gonna be at the end of the line giving these commands on what you're supposed to do. Is then going to say, company, shoulder, arms. Bring it up, rest it on your left shoulder, which is pretty comfortable. This is the most common way of carrying the firearm, especially when you're marching. Uh, it's comfortable, the weapon is resting on your shoulder. But you're marching about 10, to 15 to 20 miles a day. Uh, this weapon's going to start getting a little heavy, and you want to change different positions so you're not wearing yourself out. Uh, so another way of carrying the piece would be to support arms. Carry it like so. Again, another comfortable position. Uh, most armies would actually charge into battle, carrying the weapon in this way, and then with their right hand, they would hold the small of the stock, and they'd run into battle carrying it like so. And now some men on guard duty would carry the weapon in this manner as well. And shoulder arms. <laughs> okay, so we're at shoulder. Now we're going to say, squad, secure arms. Now you're going to hold the weapon in this manner if it is raining. Uh, you don't want water running down the barrel. Plus you're going to have the lock that's going to be tucked up under your arm to keep it out of the weather also. Shoulder arms. Now another position would be to Right shoulder, shift, arms. Okay, on the right shoulder, you've got the lock resting on your shoulder. This is actually pretty comfortable. The only disadvantage of it is you're going to be, if you're coming across some low hanging limbs, you're going to be banging the weapon against that. So if that's the case, you're going to come back to shoulder, arms. And you're going to trail, arms. You carry it down like so. Change hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Different way of carrying it, so you don't wear out your right arm. Three change hands. Shoulder, arm. <laughs> now, it comes down to hand to hand fighting, which occurs here at the Alamo. The squad is going to fix bayonets. that uh, soldiers would be trained on drilling. Uh, if you're not fighting, you're drilling. Okay? But now we're going to go through the loading process. We're not going to load it this time, but we're going to go through the 12-step process on, on loading the weapon. Uh, again, another thing that they would constantly drill at. This whole thing should become second nature to you when they're in the 
middle of combat. Okay? So we're going to begin with the squad to prepare to load at 12 times. Load. Drop the weapon down to your right side. Open pan. Handle cartridge. That's when you pull the cartridge out of your box. As I showed you, the cartridge is crimped over to paper tube. To open it, they have to tear cartridge. Right off the end of it, spit it out. Then you prime, pour the powder in the pan. Shut pan. Cast about. Charge cartridge. You're gonna pour the remaining powder and the ball and the paper all down the muzzle of the weapon. Okay, now you have to drive it all the way down to the breech. So the next command is to draw rammer. Ram cartridge. You're actually going to sling the rammer in, pound it in there. Return rammer. Now when we return the ramrod in place, if you notice Mr. Hicks pushed it in with his pinky finger, you do not do this. The reason is, that's right, the weapon is loaded, it goes off, it goes your hand. So you always use your pinky finger to drive it in. So if the piece does fire and blows your pinky off, that's okay. But you still have your hand, and you've got four other fingers to work with. So it's always with the pinky finger. And it's shoulder arms. Get up to the shoulder. Once you come to the shoulder, that tells your officer you're loaded and ready to fire. He will then give the command to make ready, aim, and fire. And all the men in line were all firing together all at once. So you're putting down a wall of lead at the enemy. Gives you a better chance of dropping more of them. Okay? So now we're going to line up and uh, go through the loading procedure and actually fire the one. Okay, I wasn't ready for that one. But that was awesome. <laughs> 
I wasn't ready for that when it made me jump. Well, you can put her 